Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. I hope you had a wonderful entrance into the new year. I spent it listening to Love Light Sound System and um, Roxy and Flavor. Yeah, so I didn't get in until about five o'clock this morning. And yeah, so I had a good night, a good entrance in, got home safe. And yeah, so that was great. Um, so what am I talking about today? I wanted to talk about, oh, if it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. But what I wanted to talk about today was the sneak and peak um, provision or act or whatever you want to call it. A lot of us don't know about it. And I think I like to think about things that are happening in the, U the US of A. And I know that the UK, if it's not on top of it already, it's not far behind. So anyway, I was listening to a video yesterday and it was talking about the privacy. And yeah, we keep going on about the privacy. You know, if you're a law abiding citizen, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, you know, me, I don't let it stop me from visiting websites, even though I know sometimes, or I think sometimes, that by researching, I could be considered um, a threat. But I just make sure I don't research any dubious websites, or if I am looking for supportive material, I try to make sure I don't delve too deeply because kids have been, you know, kids researching in schools have been approached by the FBI and stuff like that. Anyway, that is not my point. My point is that because, um, well, how do I start this? I could start it from the Patriot Act, but I want to get into, um, I want to approach it from a more general level. Now, sometimes, you know, like if you're watching TV and like, you know, Just Eat comes on. Like I've seen these Just Eat adverts, especially in the UK. And Just Eat is an advert that, you know, when it comes on, it means that you can watch TV. You don't have to go outside. You can order whatever you want from any restaurant you want. And this advert comes up, Just Eat. And I've been noticing recently that even though I'm not calling Just Eat, to um, order whatever it is, whether it's McDonald's, whether it's an Indian takeaway, whether it's a Chinese takeaway, I get up, go to my drawer, and I take out some chocolate. So I haven't been making that association until recently that even the fact that just eat makes me want to eat something. Now, what they're saying is, is that when they're collecting data on you, not just... Um, data to track you as a criminal or if it's related to terrorist activity but just data for advertising they they kind of build up this prototype of you and so they know exactly what you want now last week or just before christmas i ordered a few jumpers from wallace and then i thought to myself now nah, you're being too extravagant forget it don't bother with it. I aborted the purchase and I went about my business and did something else. From that day till this, those jumpers are popping up on my screen every bloody five minutes. Now, if I was a weak person or if I hadn't become more aware of what is happening, I would be on that, um, on that website ordering what I didn't really want to order. And that goes for anything you happen to look at on, on the internet. Whatever it is, you'll find that whatever it is you looked at pops up in the most bizarre pages. I mean, even when I'm looking at the news, I'll see jumpers pop up. And the other day I was checking out an injector for, you know, an injector for a um, BMW. Now I'm seeing that pop up everywhere I go every website it pops up you know so it's really really quite bizarre but what I'm trying to say is that you need to be really strong to resist those adverts because they're geared based on your emotion and based on your previous choices and sometimes if you don't realize it you're just going to order which is what the um, companies want you to do now, let's get a bit more serious with this now. 
in in looking that up, well, not in looking, making myself acquainted with that. And even though I know it happens, but I didn't know to what extent. Um, I didn't know it was based on, you know, the fact that they're actually trying to cajole you psychologically to buy stuff. When I'm thinking about privacy and um, whether or not it's important that we have our privacy, I came across the Patriot Act. Now, what it said, when I, the one I saw, was that it's been renewed. They've sneaked in the renewal. Uh, and that was, I think, in November this year, well, last year now, we're 2020 now. Um, they sneaked in November 2019. And that led me to think, well, what is this Petra Act? Well, the Petra Act is like a surveillance act. And it's it's in America. But as like I said, anything that's in America, the UK, if it's not on top of it, it's very, very close behind. So you need to be aware. And for this, I am going to have to kind of um, read from my notes and then ad lib. So first of all, on Tuesday, that was, I don't know if the 21st of November was a Tuesday, the House Democrats overwhelmingly voted for a stopgap government funding bill that includes an unannounced provision buried in the legislation averting the expiration of the Police State Surveillance Patriot Act. Now, what they're saying there is that it did have an expiry date because it was it was put in place after 9-11. Before that, they did used to go and they did used to do their little searches and stuff, but they needed a warrant and they needed to get permission or go before a court. After the 9-11, this Patriot Act came out, which meant they could sneak and do anything they wanted as long as they mentioned it was related to terrorism or it was um, relating to an ongoing terrorism investigation. It gave them license to investigate people's library records, financial records, medical records, all kinds of records that normally third parties wouldn't be privy to without the target knowing about it. But what they've done now, even though the expiration has expired, well, it would have expired, they've now renewed it. So now it is in place with even more provisions. So whereas before, like, say, they would say, OK, they're looking at your telephone bill, you, you know, they're checking out your telephone calls, who you're speaking to, whether or not you were connected. Now it's expand expanded. Um, to emails and not only to and from but they can actually get a subpoena and see what's actually in the body of the um, email now. So all of these um, powers that the law enforcement have have been expanded. So um, I wanted to say um, it says, um, I don't know who said this but Congress should have ended the beleaguered spy, spying program and enacted meaningful surveillance reform a long time ago, said Nima Singh Guliani, a legislative counsel for the American Civil Liberties Union. It is disappointing that Congress is instead extending spy, spying powers and have repeatedly been used to violate Americans' privacy rights and trying to bury this extension in must pass funding legislation. So that is what the civil rights liberties is talking about because they're saying, you know, it really does violate privacy rights. I mean, sometimes, yes, we, we do know that they have access to our documents and we would like to think that it's only when um, they do suspect um, terrorism or whatever. But when you think, um, because it's been extended to criminal activities, not just terrorism, you have to kind of ask yourself, what constitutes suspicion? And when you're thinking about police, you know, just the fact that somebody is different, um, irrational behaviour, 
um, unpredictable behavior, different cultures, any of those could um, constitute relating, could, could, you know, could conjure up suspicion. You know, I've seen um, in videos where the police are doing stop and search, the people, they're just looking at somebody who might be um, exchanging something with somebody else. To them, that looks suspicious. And that then can come under these extended powers. Also, I was watching um, Border Force, you know, Australian um, Customs. And there was this guy, he was profess he was um, sweating profusely. And they said, he's got something to hide, he's got something to hide. He was, a suspic he was under suspicion because they considered his behaviour unusual and he shouldn't be sweating. And what they think is that if you're, in, if you're innocent, why would you be sweating? Why would you be nervous? To be honest, if I went to um, through a, an airport and customs pulled me over and said they're going to search me, whether I had nothing, if, even if I didn't have anything in my bag, I'd be bloody nervous. It's horrible going to all that scrutiny. It's bound to make people nervous. As it happens, he didn't have anything on him. They were saying he must have ingested something or whatever, but he didn't. It was the process that made him nervous. And what I'm saying is that what people see as suspicious and will give them license to delve into your personal affairs and your personal records could be unfounded. And then that person's records are now, now become on a criminal file. So that is my concern. Anyway, um, so how does the Patriot Act affect you or me? Well, it expands the tools of law enforcement. Um, your civil rights have been reduced, but if you feel as though those it's reduced and it to keep you feel safe and you're comfortable with that, that's fine. Um, it's supposed to reduce terrorism, but my argument is, is that what makes them think that terrorists are going to communicate by email, by telephone? I mean, if they're clued up, which they probably are, they're going to meet in person. And that's even more dangerous because there is no way you can surveil them. Because of what the police are, de are depending on, they think everybody is communicating by social media or by some kind of electronic means. But it's like the normal John Joe, like you or me. If you have a suspicion that your emails are being vetted or, or read, you're going to be very careful what you put in those emails, aren't you? If you're on the phone talking to your mate, you're going to be very careful for what you say. So can you imagine terrorists? They are not going to be having any conversation of any meaning on the telephone or they're not going to be sending email or whatsapp so i don't think that this kind of patriot act or all of the surveillance and all these biometrics have got much to do with um averting terrorism it's a much more deeper situation there's something else going on here and like we know we know we like we know like, we, like, we are becoming a surveillance state and it is more to do with being able to monitor every single individual under the guise of terrorism. But it's not, because like we all know, there is still terrorist acts and they happen because these people that either act on their own independently, or if there is two of them, they're probably talking about it and they're not doing it in any other way. How are the police or the law enforcement supposed to get them if they're not communicating via electronic means. In the meantime, everybody, so even though there might be 1% terrorism, 99% of us are under severe scrutiny. It do, That doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, they must know what they're doing. Maybe there's something in there that we don't know. So is this invasion of our privacy essential? Um, to the safety of the nation? Does it protect us about terrorism? I've just given you my thoughts on that. Um, or is it an excuse to further target, discriminate and oppress perceived undesirables? Well, we all know that sometimes these surveillance methods are used to discriminate against people of colour and 
other immigrants. We know that. So that is where it becomes an issue. And that is where I believe it can be abused. Now, in America, they're saying, oh, well, it can't be abused because, you know, it will be investigated by the Secretary of State. And it's under, so, you know, it undergoes review. And these people can sue. But these are ordinary um, people. These are people not in a position to be able to sue a government. So a lot of them are left abused by the system because they cannot sue. And that goes for whether it's in America or in the UK. Um, apparently the, the most um, concerning provisions in this Patriot Act is Section 215, which allows representatives of the law to retrieve data from libraries to see what kinds of books people have checked out and normally they're looking for certain names or certain spellings and you know like when they were talking about in the UK the um, host Hostile Environment Act or paper um, they were stopping um, immigrants from getting rooms and jobs just based on their name that was their names were used to discriminate. So if they had like an African name or an Asian name, that could be used to discriminate against them. And that is what they let what somebody is saying. Um, what was her name? Her name was um, Dorothy Ehrlich. She's of American civil rights. She was saying they can actually go to libraries and ask for information if the names don't sound um, kosher. Well, not kosher, but if they got, it was, she was talking about Russian names, they were doing this investigation with people with Russian names. But what I'm saying is that that can be extended beyond that to anybody who's got a foreign name, who then becomes suspicious. So if your name, ain't, if your name isn't John Smith, and it happens to be Elijah Muhammad, or um, um, Pretty Patel, just so happens that she's famous but the fact is pretty patel you know she's an asian just by her name if you if you've got somebody with muhammad allah or some a name like that you're probably going to know that they're muslim and what i'm saying is that they can actually um ask to see um records of people who've taken out certain books by certain names and that's why you can understand why these people, they get mules and they get all different other people or they get people with English sounded names and they, um, what's that word? They um, groom them and they bypass the system. So sometimes when they're looking, um, what they're looking for is not necessarily going to be what is obvious. And these people are so clever. So what do you do when these people start using your own people to do the dirty work? Whether it's because they're vulnerable, whatever the reason. How does all these systems work? How do they become effective then? Um, so anyway, that section 2015 allows the government to check and investigate records held by third parties. That's your financial records, travel records, medical records and library records. And you'll notice that travel records is becoming a big thing. If you haven't travelled anywhere, um, you can't come into certain countries. You're supposed to have a history of travel. Now, if you haven't had a travel history before and now all of a sudden you want to start one, what happens then? You, you, you're not allowed to go? Unless you could just have to travel locally. I don't know how that works. I don't know why a first visit to a country creates suspicion. Anyway, it does. So before the act, the government needed a warrant and probable cause to examine private records. But under this extended Patriot Act, which... Um, could be construed as the hostile environment paper in the UK. They can do anything as long as they can claim it's related to terrorism. Um, so, and also in the UK, um, under the hostility, um, hostile environment paper, they were um, 
approaching schools and telling schools, teachers in schools, to get information on their students, asking them, telling them to bring in their passports to find, to find out their um, immigration status and all kinds of things. That ain't there. And if they didn't speak properly, if their language was off, well, not if their language was off, but if they had an accent, and all of those things were happened to be on a piece of paper. Um, on a record, they had to document it, and that, that was rendered unlawful uh, more recently, but they still have the records, two, two and a half years worth of records, but we don't know what they're doing with, with that information. So the government just has to state that the inv inv investigation will protect the country against terrorism, and uh, it can be subpoenaed. So, and terrorism is a blanket word used to qualify um, investigations without warrants, so we know that. Um, sneak and peek provision of the Patriot Act is also called, the legal phrase is knock and announce. And that was to make clear to targets what they were going to do. But now what the law enforcers are saying, that if they, if the target knows what they're going to do, it gives them an opportunity either to escape or to stop what they're doing. So now they want to um, sneak and peek first and then tell the target afterwards what they've done. Um, so the 1978 Pfizer law changed it so that sneak and peek could take place without notifying the targets beforehand. If foreign powers or their agents were suspects of terrorism and under the, ta under the Patriot Act, sneak and peek warrants um, which is search and then notify after the search and now extend to criminal investigations, not just terrorism. So it's like you give them an inch, they take a foot. So before they needed a warrant, they, they more or less said, OK, we're not going to um, search this place because before, you know, we used to see it on the TV. You know, you can't search a place without a warrant. And the police had to go off and get a warrant. Now they don't need a warrant. They can say, oh, well, we suspect you of terrorism or we've had reason to believe that there's terrorist activities going on in your home. Both, they're allowed in. So, um, yeah, and that can apply to anyone, anyone. It could be a mistake. You could have your face on one of those um, facial recognition cameras and become a suspect when you're totally innocent. Now, these are, this is quite an exaggeration, but the fact of the matter is it can happen and we know it has happened. And like, remember that um, person who was dressed, that white person who put on a black mask and started um, committing criminal acts? If it wasn't for his girlfriend who, who reported him to the police, they were looking for black people. I think they arrested a black person because of it. And so it's it's not no dibby dibby thing. It's serious. Um, what else is there? Uh, a ACLU says that there is no judicial oversight, but the eternal the ex eternal general says there's vigorous oversight. And this is talking about the Patriot Act. They're saying that you know the police can just go willy nilly and do whatever they want. And what one is saying is that. They can do it because there's no oversight. And what the other side is saying is that there is, they cannot abuse the powers because it's overseen and it's reviewed. I don't know what the truth is there. The trap and trace measures. Um, this is where they can track all the websites you visited and content of your emails um, is now available to the government. But once again, the ex-attorney general, his name is Edwin Ed, Edwin Meese, says you can only see the to and from. You can't see the content of the email without a warrant. So I'm not quite sure about that. So what else is there? The law has changed where you can sneak up and trap and trace without judicial involvement. That's under the extended powers, under the new... Um, where they've now reinstituted the Patriot Act. Um, the government can snoop on us without us knowing. Well, we know that. The only language that can... Oh, yeah, I've said that. Um, 
Okay, so the trap and trace was originally related to just telephone calls when whether or not the calls were connected. Now it extends to emails. You used to be able to say what calls you made and what calls were connected, which didn't get into deep private information, but now it has been extended to emails without judicial oversight requirements. The law enforcers are able to get at the content and websites if they so wish. What happens if you're researching for exams and papers and like me, um, looking for information for my videos. Once again, um, I think it'd have to be quite extensive, but they did claim that a student was researching um, on terrorism and the FBI turned up at his, his college and he had to show that he was a student. Some people say, well, that's good. But like I said, I'm not quite sure if somebody who's going to do that is going to use that means, is going to use a traceable means. So how do the law enforcers really keep us safe and relatively free? It's a very, very difficult. It can only be um, on intelligence, somebody informing. To me, um, somebody informing who's in the know is the best way. All of this is a lot of money, it's a lot of resources, and you probably aren't even getting to the root because these people are smart. You know, and instead, like China, where they, you know, people can't even rent a room if they're late on a bill or if they um, didn't pay a bill, they are kind of ostracized. You know, we don't want it to get like that where the government and apparently they were saying it could affect your insurance because you know on a grand scheme of things when they're investigating your um you know seeing where you've been and what you've done checking facebook now if you've if you have a car crash and then it can show that you were at the gym or you were you you said something on your website about something and they can relate the two incidences you know, there's that. And do you remember when people were buying clothes and they were buying clothes, and, um, like, say, for New Year's, for example, and they were putting their pictures up on Facebook with the clothes on, you know, and then taking back the clothes to the shop and saying that they um, they didn't wear them or they don't want it. They caught on with that, you know, just because of Facebook and social media. So don't, it's not no... It seems quite superficial, but it's very, very deep and it's got serious connotations in the future about your lifestyle and what choices you make and what insurances you can get and other permissions, bank accounts, depending on your behaviour and what they can see that you've done. So it's not just about criminal activity and terrorism. It's much wider than that. And remember, it's also about them getting to know your mind, getting to know you, to know what you want so that they can then feed you with that information in every possible way. So I think I am going to stop there and I hope you found that useful. And that's all for now. Bye bye. Leave my mouse.